programming tutorials are back. Hey, I know it's been a while, but we are back in full force with um, our C Sharp programming tutorials. So last tutorial, we focused on outputting text to the console. Now we're gonna be taking a look at getting text in from the console, so user input. Say you're writing program to, to collect someone's name or their age. Uh, this is how we would do that. We're also going to be going over if statements. Now, if statements are just ways of checking if things are true or if things are false. So, say if you're making a video game, um, you use an if statement, you'd say if the player's health is, you know, below zero, uh, then they would be dead. Uh, it's very simple stuff. And we're drinking water, because Monster is expensive as shit in Hawaii. So we're just going to come into our blank project and start with capturing some user input. So I'm going to do console dot read line instead of uh, write line and end that off with a semicolon of course now this is going to pause execution and it's going to wait for user input now once we get that user input we're not storing it anywhere so we need to put it in a variable like we talked about from last um, from the last tutorial so the type of data that's returned from the console.readLine function is a string. So I have to say string, and we can call that input is equal to what's returned from that. And there you go. So now we're storing whatever the user inputs from the console into the string or er, into the input variable. Now let's just use that input variable and do a console console dot right line and we can output that input. So now when we run the program, it's gonna pause, and we can say something like meme, and then it'll output meme. That's, you know, boring as shit. Right, so how do we spice things up? Well, first off, let's prompt the user for what they're inputting. They have no idea what they're inputting right now. And we already learned this, we can do console.write. And that's just a little different from write line. Write line will go to the next line and write will just keep things on the same line. You can see what I mean in a second. And we can prompt them for, say, your name. All right, now and then off a semicolon and control F5 to run. So here's what it looks like when it runs. Um, it's prompting us for our name. We can put our name and it outputs, you know, our name, Harambe. But Michael, that's still boring as shit. So let's fuck around a bit with our output. Um, we're gonna do something called string concatenation. And I know that's a pretty long sounding complicated word, but it's really not. It's just uh, taking two strings and, you know, mashing them together. So we can take our input, which is being outputted right here, and we can concatenate it with something. We can say, um, we can say like name, and the way we concatenate things are with a plus sign. And make sure to leave that space or else these are gonna, the input uh, and this string, the name, are gonna be right next to each other. So we're just gonna leave a little space there. And if we run this, and I put in my name, cool. Name is Michael, you know, I already knew my name was Michael, but you know, we're making progress. So we can expand upon some of the stuff we learned here. Um, instead of just taking in someone's name, how about we take in their age? And we have to save this to a different variable. We can call age, just to keep with good naming conventions. We don't want one called input and uh, another variable called age. So let's change this one to name. And I'm just gonna put a little line for clarity here. And you know, obviously the variable input doesn't exist anymore, so we are just gonna have to change that to name. And how about we spice things up with our string we're concatenating it to? Let's let's make it a little nicer. So my name is, and then it will output um, whatever name we input here. And let's concatenate another string. And I am, and then we can concatenate our age. So if we want run the program and we input our name, Michael, and we input our age, you almost got me, you fucker. Uh, we'll say 12 to 34. My name is Michael and I am 12 to 34. You'll see here that there is a uh, no space between am and 12 to 34. That's because we forgot a space there. And now when we run it, um, it'll have a space and look real nice. 
A quick little aside about software development, always assume that the end user is a complete asshole because more often than not they are. They're going to try and break your stuff, they're going to not use it how you plan to have it used. Um, so they're, they're going to go in and do stuff that you didn't want. This is my name is Harambe and I am, you're expecting them to put their age, but they put in a string instead. You know, I am alive. So, you know, always be on the lookout for that. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of taking in user input. So now let's just delete all of that and start learning about if statements. I know it's kind of a weird transition, but we're going to put the two together and make something sort of useful at the end of this tutorial. So just trust me on that. So if statements are an incredibly important part when working with any programming language. Um, yet they're pretty simple at their foundation. So let me show you how one looks. If Wow, that was, that was pretty complicated. So if the condition that we give in these parentheses is true, then the code between these brackets will execute. So let's give it something to check. We'll just create a variable, simple variable. We'll call it int x is equal to 10. So we have an integer x is equal to the value 10. And inside of this if statement, we're going to say if the integer x is equal to 10. Then we'll execute the code in here, which we can make console dot write line and x is 10, right? So if x is equal to 10 right here, then we're going to execute this code console dot write line x is 10. So something you may have noticed is that inside of here, we have two equal signs instead of one. Um, it's important to understand that these are two kind of completely different things. The double equal sign is to denote that we're evaluating this. So if x is equivalent, it's known as the equivalence operator. If x is equivalent to 10, then we're going to execute, you know, all the code inside this bracket. Um, up here, uh, when it's just a single equals, it's known as the assignment operator because we're assigning the value 10 to the variable x. They're totally different things. So now if we execute this, um, it outputs that x is 10. So if what happens if we change x to something that is not 10? Well then, well, I'll just run it and you'll see nothing happens. Uh, that's because we go in here, it checks, oh, if x is equal, equivalent to 10, then we're going to execute this stuff. Obviously it isn't, so we just skip right by it and the program ends. All right, so that's all well and good, uh, but there are a few more logical operators I want to cover. And I'll do that pretty fast. I'll, I'll go back in and explain each one um, in more detail. So we already know what this one does. This is for non-equivalence. Uh, this one is, you know, you recognize this. This was for greater than, this is for less than. This is for greater than or equal to, and this one is for less than or equal to. And these, uh, we won't talk about these today. So let's have a look at the non-equivalence operator. So if we come in here and we change our equivalence operator to the non-equivalence operator, then this is saying, okay, so if our x variable is not equal to 10, so if it's equal to any other number in the universe, well, you know, that an n can hold, then we'll execute the stuff inside of here. And how about we just say execute, so we don't have to keep changing that every single time. And we run that, and because x is not equal to 10, then we execute. So if it's equal to like anything, any, any crazy number that isn't 10, uh, then it'll execute, but if it is 10, then, you know, it won't execute the code inside of here. All right, so I'm sure you guys all recognize, you know, greater than and less than signs. So if we change this to a greater than, if, you know, x is greater than 10, then we'll execute the code inside of here. So if we run this, it actually won't execute any code. That's because 10 is not greater than 10. And, you know, the same goes for less than. Uh, 10 is not less than 10. So if we want the numbers that we're comparing to be inclusive, then that's actually where these other operators comes in, come in, these two. So if we use these, these just mean greater than or equal to. So if x is anything greater than 10, so, you know, anything above 10, then it will execute the code inside of here. And if it is equal to 10, then we'll also execute the code inside of here. The same goes for less than, but you guys can figure that out. All right, so now that I've gone on my uh, talking spree about the logical operators, let's talk a little bit more about the if statement itself. So specifically, we're going to talk about something called the else block. And that looks like this. So the else block, the else block execute if the if statement does not execute. So if this 
doesn't come true, if this never executes, then we're gonna execute what's inside the else block. So we can do, I'm gonna just write something in here to let us know that this executed. Um, else executed. So let me just change this to is equal equal to 10. And we'll change 10 to something like 16. So when I run this, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, so is x equal to 10? No, the value of x is 16. So we're gonna not execute this line, and instead we're gonna execute this else statement because nothing up here was true. So the else block is executed. And obviously the else block does not have a condition like up here, this is why it's missing parentheses, is because it is executed if everything up here is not executed regardless of what the condition is. Then there's one more block I want to talk about. I promise this is the last one, um, and that is the else if block. I know there's a lot of uh, stuff I'm saying, but this is, you know, I promise this is the last one. So the else ifs condition is checked after the initial if statements condition is checked. So if this chunk does not run, we're gonna check this condition, which doesn't have anything in it for now. And if that's not run, then we're gonna execute this else statement. So let me just fill in an example condition here. You know, we'll say if it's, well, if X is greater than 10, and then we'll do, We'll just execute else if execute. So in this specific case, let's just run through what the program is doing, what it's saying. So it comes in here, we're initializing x to the value 16. We're saying if x is equivalent to 10, then we're gonna execute this line. Obviously the value 16 is not equivalent to 10, so let's move on. We're gonna move on to this else if block. If x is greater than 10, then we're gonna execute this line. Since 16 is greater than 10, we're gonna execute this block and we're gonna skip over this else statement because something above the else statement was run. So similarly, if this if condition is true and this block is executed, the program is gonna skip over all the else ifs and the else block because we already have a condition that's true up here. So if we come up here and we make this, you know, 16, and if x is equal to 16 and it checks and says, oh, f is e x is equal to 16, then this line will execute and it's not even gonna check these bottom two. And guess what, fucker? Uh, we can have as many of these else if statements as we want. We can have boom, 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 up to infinity. We can have a check if it is it greater than 11, is it greater than 12, is it, I don't know, not equal to, so whatever that number is. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can have as many else ifs as you want and they're all gonna sequentially check one after the other until one is found. And if one, and if not one condition is met, then this else block will just run. So Michael, why did we spend the last eternity learning about if statements? I just wanna learn how to program stupid shit. This, this stuff is, this is core. This is like, this is your bread and butter. You're gonna wanna, you have to pick this up first. If you wanna learn calculus, you gotta learn how to add first, right? Maybe not, I don't know. I never took calculus, so I wouldn't know, but you know, point remains. So that's it for this tutorial. Before I wrap things up, I wanted to, you know, give a shout out to everyone who came and supported me uh, for my Patreon campaign. Uh, it's been really great for the channel and helping me with productivity on videos. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, uh, yeah, head on over. I'll leave a link there and down in the description and consider supporting me if uh, you enjoy what I make here. That being said, I know today's topics were kind of seemed all over the place. They kind of out of context, but I promise that next tutorial we're going to be putting them into a practical project and uh, that'll help just bring everything together a lot more nicely. So yeah, thanks for watching.